Good afternoon. I am Dr. Alokin Bush, Head Department of Rheumatology and Clinical Criminology, IPGM and SSK Hospital, Bulga. Today, uh, I have planned to share with you some of the interesting facets of vasculitis, which is a very important challenge for the clinician as well as the rheumatologist, because it has got a significant mimica. The clinician uh, needs to identify what are the mimickers, and if we can differentiate this from vasculitis, we can have therapeutic options. Because if it's a uh, most important mimica is the infection. So if you cannot differentiate vasculitis from infection at the primary aim, as a primary clinician, so it will, there will be therapeutic jugglery, like instead of giving antibiotic, we are providing immunosuppression, which will cause catastrophe. And if it's an infection-associated multisystem clinical spectrum, mimicking vasculitis, and if you cannot start antibiotic, there will be absolute misery of clinical outcome. So the first and foremost thing for us is to, to identify or differentiate or, or to define what is vasculitis. It's a heterogeneous group of clinical disorder and there is characteristically inflammation inside or within the vascular wall and that can affect multiple organs starting from brain, cardiovascular, pulmonary, renal, and cutaneous as well can affect multiple organ can affect vessel of any caliber small medium large symptoms are predominantly related to the type of vessels is being affected what is large vessel aorta and its major branches medium vessel main visceral arteries and veins and small vessel capillary post capillary venules arterioles and uh, this, this, depending on this vessel territory anatomical involvement, we had classical 2012 Chapel Hill International Consensus Conference, which has classified and given the vasculitis classification. Amongst this, large vessel vasculitis involves Takayasu and Janssen arthritis, medium vessel, either it's a polyarthritis nodosa, Kawasaki. Small vessel, either it's an AMCA associated vasculitis like GPA, MPA, EGPA, or it's an immune complex vasculitis like anti GPM vasculitis, cryoglobulinemic vasculitis, IgA vasculitis predominantly in the young population, or hypocomplement anemic vasculitis, and there are variable vasculitis like Bechet's Kogat. We can have a single organ vasculitis restricted to cutaneous leukocytoclastic or a primary CNS angitis or isolated eotitis. And we can have vasculitis associated with systemic disease like systemic lupus with vasculitis, rheumatoid with vasculitis. We have seen patients of Sjogren's with vasculitis and vasculitis associated with probability etiology like HCV associated or H. BS, EG associated, or can have drug induced vasculitis as well. So, let us start with the large vessel vasculitis. Let's take an example 23 year female presenting with an acute onset right sided hemiplegia, CT documented to have left sided infarct. So, young stroke. On general survey, there is dissociated peripheral pulse along with an hypertension and color doctor ultrasound documented concentric wall thickening of left common carotid artery. That's what is G uh, Takayasu's arthritis and that is common in Japan, China, India and Southeast Asia. From India, though we have contributed on the very remarkable literature in the assessment of Takayasu's arthritis, Indian Takayasu activity score, i.e. TUSP, and that is 2010 publication, ITAS with either ESR or CRP gives a robust insight for assessing the activity. Usually female preponderance, female is to male age is 12, median age around 25 years, and common artery involvement, subclavian artery and water, and common presenting symptoms are claudication, 
reduce the absent pulse, carotid bruit, hypertension, carotidinia. Other symptoms may be associated with constitutional musculoskeletal cutaneous. And there are Asia 1990 classification criteria of Takayasu and which have been utilized for identification of the Takayasu. When to suspect young patient with stroke, unexplained hypertension at young age or dissociated peripheral pulse with or without systemic features and increased acute phase reactance suggestive of inflammatory pathology. And the most important diagnostic non-invasive modality is imaging and that can document common carotid artery occlusion, subclavian occlusion and we have our color Doppler ultrasound Kolkata score CDUSK which has been corroborated with IETAS 2010 and that's given insight again for assessment of vasculitis activity. And now the, what are the management? Management is immunosuppression to start with 0.5 mg per kg per day corticosteroid and when there is worsening or, or new onset of fever, raised acute phase reactant, claudication and typical angiographic involvement. Along with that, steroid sparing agent is methotrexate, azathioprine, mycophenolate. These can be used. But when patients do not respond with this combination immunosuppressive, IL-6 inhibitor tocilizumab has been shown a remarkable efficacy. Next part is giant cell arthritis, GCA. That's an elderly male presented with a severe onset fever with scalp tenderness. USG shows halocyte, very characteristic sign for the diagnosis of GCA and biopsy of temporal artery documented inflammatory infantry. So this is another, there is a classification criteria of GCA as well. And headache is the predominant symptom along with systemic features like fever, weight loss, fatigue, and if there is associated visual symptom, that's a really red herring sign. And patients, we cannot waste time for confirmation. Clinical suspicion is the index of confirmation and once you start immediate immunosuppression. And uh, along with prednisolone can have, nowadays, tocilizumab has shown a remarkable efficacy. Along with that, leflunomide people are trying and United Kingdom British group who has pioneered the recommendation in, in classification. They have come up that leflunomide in addition to corticosteroid has got a very good efficacy. Next comes the medium vessel vasculitis. One is GCA, MPA, EGP. Multi-system disease and again can mimic infection. 45 year men presented with a low grade fever. Last two months, recurrent abdominal pain. And ANCA is negative, skin biopsy, focal and segmental transmural necrotizing inflammation. And abdominal angiography documented a neurismal dilatation involving renal artery dystelia as well. That is what is pain, polyarthritis nodosa. And Asia 1990 has got a classification criteria. First and foremost is weight loss, more than 4 kg. Levator reticular is very important stigma. Testicular pain or tenderness, myalgia, weakness, leg tenderness, mononeuropathy or polyneuropathy, diastolic blood pressure more than 90 mm, blood urea nitrogen or creatinine may be raised. Hep B positivity is a very common and important association. Arteriographic abnormality, as I have shared with you, and biopsy classically documenting vasculitis pathology. And uh, the frequency of organ involvement, if you try to elaborate, constitutional is the predominant around 90 percent, musculoskeletal up to 80 to 90 percent, neurologic about 80 percent, suddenly present in food drop or wrist drop, skin necrosis are up to half of the patient, cerebrovascular, cardiovascular around one third, renal about two third of the patient can present with renal pathology, and abdominal precisely, abdominal pain recurrent without any objective pathologic or objective investigational documentation of the underlying cause. So we need to have the, the clinical insight to diagnose polyarthritis nodosa. 
heavy versus non heavy associated pan is a very important issue non heavy pan have a high mortality especially if it involve the elderly and worse in patients with skin manifestations and treatment you have got as you know corticosteroid plus cyclophosphamide is an induction followed by azathioprine as a maintenance therapy next part is kawasaki child pediatric population 4 to 5 years old present with fever conjunctival and buccal mucosal redness erythema and edema of the hands and feet very characteristically followed by desquamation and examination reveals cervical adenopathy and uh, fever of at least 5 days plus 4 out of 5 features like changes in the peripheral extremities or perianal area exfoliation and poly polymorphic exanthem bilateral conjunctival condition changes of lip and oral cavity injection red lip and cervical adenopathy these are clinical components and for management interestingly we need to start aspirin followed by IV it's not corticosteroid neither cyclophosphamide nor other therapy and uh, if there is inadequate response to corticosteroid infliximab is a good choice maintenance low dose aspirin until ESR comes down and platelet counts are normal and if there is coronary artery involvement that's a very uh, prognostically bad sign we need to revamping of IVIG along with an TNF inhibitor if required. Let's come to the other group, ANCA associated vasculitis, MPA and GPA and EGPA. So let's first start with GPA. 45 year male, recurrent attacks of cough, hemoptysis, treated with antibiotic, no improvement, tried with anti tubercular, no improvement, and there is recurrent new onset nodules involving the lung with cavitation and uh, suddenly develop food drop, renal impairment with rising creatinine, active urine sediments. That's what's it, including renal, neurology, cutaneous, and pulmonary. Pulmonary renal syndrome, classically we can stamp, and renal biopsy documents, necrotizing glomerulonephritis with interstitial inflammatory documents. And need to have the suspicion that we are possibly dealing with ANCA associated vasculitis. ANCA is positive, C ANCA positive, precisely PR3 more than 200. There is leukocytosis, thrombocytosis, raised ESR, and hemoglobin is low with the raised create urine showing active sediment. And histology, classically, as we have discussed, can document necrotizing granuloma. And uh, GPA, MPA, EGPA. ENT upper respiratory involvement and involvement predominance in GPA and uh, joint muscle can have around 30 to 50 percent in all the cases but in GPA, MPA usually renal involvement more in comparison to EGPA. EGPA has got a predominant past history of bronchial asthma for 10 years, 20 years down the line. Lung involvement also predominantly GPA and EGPA less in MPA. Eye involvement more with GPA than with other group. Cardiac involvement usually to 30% in all the group. Cutaneous manifestations more with GPA and EGPA less with MPA. Peripheral nerve involvement is more with EGPA than with MPA and GPA. CNS involvement usually 5 to 20% in all the group. GI involvement and have one third of the patient. Constitutional predominance is around two third of the patients. And uh, the usual uh, uh, management protocol involves corticosteroid with cyclophosphamide as an induction, followed by maintenance either with methotrexate azathioprine or, as has been proved in literature nowadays, for maintenance therapy, retax possibly is a better choice and has got an edge over other traditional therapies. And what are the mimickers? Mimickers is infection. As we are talking, at first infection is a sepsis bacterial polybacterial microbial can have a malignancy as a mimicker, CLL, HCL, paraneoplastic, antifus polypid syndrome also comes a very close mimicker, IgG4 related disease is also not to be ignored and interestingly we have seen bacterial endocarditis, we have seen atrial myxoma coming as a differential in, in the setting of 
ANCA associated vasculite. So when one should ask for ANCA, unexplained rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, pulmonary hemorrhage, especially pulmonary renal syndrome, cutaneous vasculitis with systemic features, multiple lung nodules, unexplained chronic destructive aparoary disease, lung, long-standing sinusitis, subglottic tracheal stenosis. These are aparoary pathology and as well as lower airway which needs to be evaluated through ANCA. Mononeuritis multiplex or peripheral neuropathy and retroorbital unexplained mass. These are the clinical situation which demands early and urgent ANCA evaluation. And what are the other non-vasculitic condition where ANCA may be positive like inflammatory bowel disease can have ANCA positivity, rheumatoid arthritis, eosinophilic myalgia syndrome can have, infection like tuberculosis, HIV, leprosy can have, atrial myxoma, small lung cancer or hypernephroma can have positivity like that. Invasive amoebiasis interestingly can give rise to ANCA positivity and uh, these are the clinical situation where one should try to differentiate on the basis of spectrum of clinical positivity rather than ANCA. Next is IgA vasculitis, very common childhood presentation. ANCA is negative skin rash along with an arthritis with pain abdomen. So there is no characteristic laboratory findings. There is a petlet with purpuric rash and can have associated abdominal pain because of GI vasculitis and in some situation can present with microscopic hematuria which is a prognostically bad sign may require histopathology. And uh, there are therapeutic uh, outcomes are much better, corticosteroid requirement is very less but when there is renal involvement one should go for corticosteroid along with the second immunosuppression and patient can have GI manifestations and for those GI manifestations one need to go for high dose corticosteroid along with cyclophosphamide or mycophenol. Next part is cryoglobulinemic vasculitis, patient presents with an palpura along with the neuropathy and the most important part is cryoglobulin positive, sudden diminution of temperature from 37 to 4 degree precipitates and that is what is cryoprecipitate. Rheumatoid factor positivity serum C4 is low without having any classical picture neither of rheumatoid arthritis nor of uh, lupus. Can have type 1, type 2 and uh, either polyclonal or monoclonal association. Antiviral therapy plus interferon revivirin considered an optimal therapy for mixed cryoglobulinema associated with hepatitis C and uh, retux as a good therapeutic support. Cryoglobulinemia not associated with hepatitis C or lipoproliferative disease. Retux plus corticosteroid is a good uh, choice. So to summarize, vasculitis is a pathology of inflammation of blood vessels but it has got a very strong mimickers of infection and malignancy. And there are multi-organ involvement, especially with pulmonary renal syndrome is a very important manifestation. And ANCA positivity is a good spectrum involving three classical vasculitis. Uh, there are a wide spectrum, big chunk, which can present with vasculitis, but having no ANCA. So we need to have a good overview, good vision to identify vasculitis so that we can start therapy. And another challenge is how long to continue the maintenance not yet been established till the people are claiming the two years possibly are enough but then now 2021 some of the literatures are coming up with the article with information that we may need to continue more because otherwise 40 percent patient can go for relapse so vasculitis diagnosis is a diagnosis more as a challenge to identify to separate it from mimica and therapy need to continue how long not yet well being defined. Thank you, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah.